Hello and welcome to another daily devotion as this week we talk about Easter tide, Easter blessings, resurrection moments, and new beginnings. A UCC pastor, Mary Ludi, preached a sermon on the power of pardon at Easter. And she talks about how in Matthew's Gospel we get this rare glimpse, the only glimpse of the Gospels, where Judas, who betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, realizes, what have I done? I betrayed innocent blood. This guy wasn't meant to lead an armed rebellion against Rome, even though I might have wanted it. This, his kingdom really is of a different way. And he goes back to give back the coins. And the priests say, what is that to us? He says, no, I, I was wrong. Please, let him go. And they say, what's that to us? It's done. And in his inability to forgive himself, Matthew records, he goes out and he hangs himself. He's, he can't imagine that when Christ said, this is my body broken for you, that he really meant it. And so as a church, we talk about Easter, but we don't ever talk about Judas at Easter. I mean, he's like that, that relative, that black sheep of the family that nobody wants to really mention. People are glad when they doesn't, he doesn't really show up to cause a scene at Thanksgiving or Christmas or other family holidays. And when he does, everybody's like, ah. Uh, because we think about Judas as the bad guy. And if Judas had been there, you know, if he hadn't let despair and his own failures consume him, if he had really taken to heart Christ's offering, my body broken for you, I wonder what it would have looked like if he had been with the other disciples in the upper room. My peace I give to you. The shame that had hovered around him like a black cloud might not have stolen his life. If he could have experienced Jesus coming through the walls of the upper room or walking on the road to Emmaus, been in the boat with Jesus as they're fishing and asking, have you caught anything yet? And playfully, then asking them to come have breakfast. Do you love me? If he could have received the offer of grace that Peter did, after all, he betrayed him too. Heck, he denied that he ever even met him. Is that worse than taking 30 pieces of silver? What about the other guys? They all ran away, saving their own necks. They failed just as much as he did. Now, maybe he was calculated or intentioned. But as far as Levi or Matthew is concerned, Judas's heart was in the right place, and he realized what he had done. Our need of grace to speak and have, or to be still and have Christ speak life into our failures, our denials, our betrayals, and our cruelties? Well, the kingdom's offered to Judas too. He just couldn't see it. And I hope <clears throat> that when you think, I'm no Mother Teresa, I'm no Martin Luther, I'm no minister or deacon or I couldn't ever lead a Bible study. I could never do X, Y, or Z. And we, we tell ourselves all the reasons that we don't qualify for being those who would follow Christ after resurrection. And I'm here to say to you, to any of us, it's not a who's who's list. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a country club or a golf place where you got to have your name on the on the locker and, you know, a place where you belong. No. All of us are called. All of us are invited to come out of our graves, the places where we're buried, and to live into a new beginning, not just one day a year, but every day in Easter joy. We are an Easter people, Pope John Paul II said, and Alleluia is our daily song. May it be so for you this Easter week. 